Book One, Chapters Three through Five of the Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jim Clevenger. The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One by Flavius Josephus, translated by William Weston, Book One, Chapters Three through Five. Chapter Three Concerning the Flood, and After What Manner Noah Was Saved in an Ark with His Kindred, and Afterwards Dwelt in the Plain of Shinar. Now this posterity of Seth continued to esteem God as the lord of the universe and to have an entire regard to virtue for seven generations but in process of time they were perverted and forsook the practices of their forefathers and did neither pay those honors to god which were appointed them nor had they any concern to do justice towards men but for what degree of zeal they had formerly shown for virtue they now showed by their actions a double degree of wickedness whereby they made god to be their enemy for many angels of god accompanied with women and begat sons that proved unjust and despisers of all that was good on account of the confidence they had in their own strength for the tradition is that these men did what resembled the acts of those whom the grecians called giants but noah was very uneasy at what they did and being displeased at their conduct persuaded them to change their dispositions and their acts for the better but seeing they did not yield to him but were slaves to their wicked pleasures he was afraid they would kill him together with his wife and children and those they had married so he departed out of that land now god loved this man for his righteousness yet he not only condemned those other men for their wickedness but determined to destroy the whole race of mankind and to make another race that should be pure from wickedness and cutting short their lives and making their years not so many as they formerly lived but one hundred and twenty only he turned the dry land into sea and thus were all these men destroyed but noah alone was saved for god suggested to him the following contrivance and way of escape that he should make an ark of four stories high three hundred cubits long fifty cubits broad and thirty cubits high accordingly he entered into that ark and his wife and sons and their wives and put into it not only other provisions to support their wants there but also sent in with the rest all sorts of living creatures, the male and his female for the preservation of their kinds, and others of them by sevens. Now this ark had firm walls and a roof and was braced with cross beams, so that it could not be any way drowned or overborne by the violence of the water. And thus was Noah, with his family, preserved. Now he was the tenth from Adam, as being the son of Lamesh, whose father was Methuselah. He was the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, and Jared was the son of Mahalal, who with many of his sisters were the children of Canaan, the son of Enos. Now Enos was the son of Seth, the son of Adam. This calamity happened in the six hundredth year of Noah's government, in the second month, called by the Macedonians Dias, but by the Hebrew Markeshvan, for so did they order their year in Egypt. But Moses appointed 
that Nisan, which is the same with Xanthicus, should be the first month of their festivals, because he brought them out of Egypt in that month, so that this month began the year as to all the solemnities they observed to the honor of God, although he preserved the original order of the months as to selling and buying and other ordinary affairs. Now he says that this flood began on the twenty-seventh day of the forementioned month, and this was two thousand six hundred and fifty-six years from Adam, the first man, and the time is written down in our sacred books, those who then lived having noted down with great accuracy both the births and deaths of illustrious men. For indeed Seth was born when Adam was in his two hundred and thirtieth year, who lived nine hundred and thirty years. Seth begat Enos in his two hundred and fifth year, who, when he had lived nine hundred and twelve years, delivered the government to Canaan his son, whom he had in his hundred and ninetieth year. He lived nine hundred and five years. Canaan when he had lived nine hundred and ten years, had his son Mahalol, who was born in his hundred and seventieth year. This Mahalol, having lived eight hundred and ninety-five years, died, leaving his son Jared, whom he begat when he was in his hundred and sixty-fifth year. He lived nine hundred and sixty-two years, and then his son Enoch succeeded him, who was born when his father was one hundred and sixty-two years old. Now he, when he had lived three hundred and sixty-five years, departed and went to God, whence it is that they have not written down his death. Now Methuselah, the son of Enoch, who was born to him when he was one hundred and sixty-five years old, had Lamash for his son when he was one hundred and eighty-seven years of age, to whom he delivered the government when he had retained it nine hundred and sixty-nine years. Now Lamash, when he had governed seven hundred and seventy-seven years, appointed Noah his son to be ruler of the people who was born to Lamash when he was one hundred and eighty-two years old, and retained the government nine hundred and fifty years. These years collected together make up the sum before set down. But let no one inquire into the deaths of these men, for they extended their lives along together with their children and grandchildren. But let him have regard to their births only. When God gave the signal, and it began to rain, the water poured down forty entire days, till it became fifteen cubits higher than the earth, which was the reason why there was no greater number preserved, since they had no place to fly to. When the rain ceased, the water did, but just began to abate after one hundred and fifty days, it then ceasing to subside for a little while. After this the ark rested on the top of a certain mountain in Armenia, which, when Noah understood, he opened it, and seeing a small piece of land about it, he continued quiet, and conceived some cheerful hopes of deliverance. But a few days afterward, when the water was decreased to a greater degree, he sent out a raven, as desirous to learn whether any other part of the earth were left dry by the water, and whether he might go out of the ark with safety. But the raven, finding all the land still overflowed, returned to Noah again, and after seven days he sent out a dove to know the state of the ground, which came back to him covered with mud and bringing an olive branch. Hereby Noah learned that the earth was become clear of the flood. So after he had stayed seven more days, he sent the living creatures out of the ark, and both he and his family went out, when he also sacrificed to God and feasted with his companions. However, the Armenians call this place the place of descent, 
where the ark being saved in that place its remains are shown there by the inhabitants to this day now all the writers of barbarian histories make mention of this flood and of this ark among whom is berossus the chaldean for when he is describing the circumstances of the flood he goes on thus it is said there is still some part of this ship in armenia at the mountain of the cordians and that some people carry off pieces of the bitumen which they take away and use chiefly as amulets for the averting of mischiefs hieronymus the egyptian also who wrote the phoenician antiquities and manases and a great many more make mention of the same nay nicolaus of damascus in his ninety-sixth book hath a particular relation about them where he speaks thus there is a great mountain in armenia over Minyas called Berus, upon which it is reported that many who fled at the time of the deluge were saved and that one who was carried in an ark came on shore upon the top of it and that the remains of the timber were a great while preserved this might be the man about whom moses the legislator of the jews wrote but as for noah he was afraid since god had determined to destroy mankind lest he should drown the earth every year so he offered burnt offerings and besought god that nature might hereafter go on in its former orderly course and that he would not bring on so great a judgment any more by which the whole race of creatures might be in danger of destruction but that having now punished the wicked he would of his goodness spare the remainder and such as he had hitherto judged fit to be delivered from so severe a calamity for that otherwise these last must be more miserable than the first and that they must be condemned to a worse condition than the others unless they be suffered to escape entirely that is if they be reserved for another deluge while they must be afflicted with the terror and sight of the first deluge and must also be destroyed by a second he also entreated god to accept of his sacrifice and to grant that the earth might never again undergo the like effects of his wrath that men might be permitted to go on cheerfully in cultivating the same to build cities and live happily in them and that they might not be deprived of any of those good things which they enjoyed before the flood but might attain to the like length of days and old age which the ancient people had arrived at before when noah had made these supplications god who loved the man for his righteousness granted entire success to his prayers and said that it was not he who brought the destruction on a polluted world but that they underwent that vengeance on account of their own wickedness and that he had not brought men into the world if he had himself determined to destroy them it being an instance of greater wisdom not to have granted them life at all than after it was granted to procure their destruction but the injuries said he they offered to my holiness and virtue forced me to bring this punishment upon them but i will leave off for the time to come to require such punishments the effects of so great wrath for their future wicked actions and especially on account of thy prayers but if i shall at any time send tempests of rain in an extraordinary manner be not affrighted at the largeness of the showers for the water shall no more overspread the earth however i require you to abstain from shedding the blood of men and to keep yourselves pure from murder and to punish those that commit any such thing i permit you to make use of all the other living creatures at your pleasure and as your appetites lead you for i have made you lords of them all both of those that walk on the land and those that swim in the waters and of those that fly in the regions of the air on high excepting their blood 
for therein is the life. But I will give you a sign that I have left off my anger by my bow, whereby is meant the rainbow, for they determined that the rainbow was the bow of God. And when God had said and promised thus, he went away. Now when Noah had lived three hundred and fifty years after the flood, and that all that time happily, he died, having lived the number of nine hundred and fifty years. But let no one, upon comparing the lives of the ancients with our lives, and with the few years which we now live, think that what we have said of them is false, or make the shortness of our lives at present an argument that neither did they attain to so long a duration of life, for those ancients were beloved of God and made by God himself, and because their food was then fitter for the prolongation of life, might well live so great a number of years. And besides, God afforded them a longer time of life on account of their virtue and the good use they made of it, and astronomical and geometrical discoveries which would not have afforded the time of foretelling unless they had lived six hundred years for the great year is completed in that interval now i have for witnesses to what i have said all those that have written antiquities both among the greeks and barbarians for even manetho who wrote the Egyptian histories, and Berossus, who collected the Chaldean monuments, and Hestias, and besides these, Hieronymus, the Egyptian, and those who composed the Phoenician history, agree to what I here say. Hesiod, also, and Hecatsuus, Hellenicus, and Acusalos, and besides these, Ephorus and Nicolaus relate that the ancients lived a thousand years. But as to these matters, let every one look upon them as he sees fit. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 Concerning the Tower of Babylon and the Confusion of Tongues Now the sons of Noah were three, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, born one hundred years before the deluge, these first of all descended from the mountains into the plains and fixed their habitation there and persuaded others who were greatly afraid of the lower grounds on account of the flood and so were very loath to come down from the higher places to venture to follow their examples now the plain in which they first dwelt was called shinar god also commanded them to send colonies abroad for the thorough peopling of the earth that they might not raise sedition among themselves but might cultivate a great part of the earth and enjoy its fruits after a plentiful manner but they were so ill instructed that they did not obey god for which reason they fell into calamities and were made sensible by experience of what sin they had been guilty for when they flourished with a numerous youth god admonished them again to send out colonies but they imagining the prosperity they enjoyed was not derived from the favor of god but supposing that their own power was the proper cause of the plentiful condition they were in did not obey him nay they added to this their disobedience of the divine will the suspicion that they were therefore ordered to send out separate colonies that being divided asunder they might more easily be oppressed now it was nimrod who excited them to such an affront and contempt of god he was the grandson of ham the son of noah a bold man and of great strength of hand he persuaded them not to ascribe it to god as if it was through his means they were happy but to believe that it was their own courage which procured that happiness he also gradually changed the government into tyranny seeing no other way of turning men from the fear of god but to bring them into a constant dependence on his power he also said he would be revenged on god if he should have a mind to drown the world again for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to be able to reach and that he would avenge himself on god for destroying their forefathers 
Now the multitude were very ready to follow the determination of Nimrod, and to esteem it a piece of cowardice to submit to God, and they built a tower, neither sparing any pains, nor being any degree negligent about the work, and by reason of the multitude of hands employed in it, it grew very high, sooner than any one could expect. But the thickness of it was so great, and it was so strongly built, that thereby its great height seemed upon view to be less than it really was. It was built of burnt brick, cemented together with mortar, made of bitumen, that it might not be liable to admit water. When God saw that they acted so madly, he did not resolve to destroy them utterly, since they were not grown wiser by the destruction of the former sinners. But he caused a tumult among them by producing in them divers languages, and causing that, through the multitude of those languages, they should not be able to understand one another. The place wherein they built the tower is now called Babylon, because of the confusion of that language which they readily understood before. For the Hebrews mean, by the word Babel, confusion. The Sibyl also makes mention of this tower, and of the confusion of the language, when she says thus, When all men were of one language, some of them built a high tower, as if they would thereby ascend up to heaven. But the gods sent storms of wind and overthrew the tower, and gave every one his peculiar language. And for this reason it was that the city was called Babylon. But as to the plain of Shinar in the country of Babylonia, Astias mentions it when he says thus, Such of the priests as were saved took the sacred vessels of Jupiter and Elias and came to Shinar of Babylonia. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 After what manner the posterity of Noah sent out colonies and inhabited the whole earth. After this they were dispersed abroad, on account of their languages, and went out by colonies everywhere, and each colony took possession of that land which they light upon, and unto which God led them, so that the whole continent was filled with them, both the inland and the maritime countries. There were some also who passed over the sea in ships and inhabited the islands, and some of those nations do still retain the denominations which were given them by their first founders. But some have lost them also, and some have only admitted certain changes in them that they might be the more intelligible to the inhabitants. And they were the Greeks who became the authors of such mutations, for when in after ages they grew potent, they claimed to themselves the glory of antiquity, giving names to the nations that sounded well in Greek, that they might be better understood among themselves, and setting agreeable forms of government over them, as if they were a people derived from themselves. End of chapter 5 End of Book 1, Chapters 3 through 5. Recording by Jim Clevenger, Little Rock, Arkansas. Jim at jocclev.com.